Welcome back to Viewpoint. Tonight we're looking at radio. The station, surveys say, is The Rock's favourite, Radio Gibraltar, turned 60 this past week. Viewpoint took that celebratory moment as a prompt to examine how well radio is faring as a medium against the vast competition that exists today in the form of the internet generally and of course streaming platforms in particular. Michael, thanks a lot for your time. As, um, as GBC's Head of Engineering, can we pick your brains as to how radio works in a nutshell? Yeah, well, so downstairs we've got the uh, four studios and one of those in a, a particular time would be live and that signal comes up onto our tower and because of the difficult terrain that we have around Gibraltar, um, we've got to get that signal um, up to the stations on the top of the rock and one uh, down at North Mole. So how we do that is we use what's called STLs, studio to transmitter links. And uh, in this particular case, we've got um, uh, frequencies operating up around 800 megahertz. And the signal is uh, modulated onto uh, a carrier, uh, delivered to the site, and then demodulated and then presented to the, the transmitter, which would operate at substantially higher powers. Well, if you, if you can imagine, when I started in 74, you needed a radio to listen to the radio. <laughs> uh, and it was AM. And of course, uh, AM, uh, as much as we try to get the best out of it, there's a, a limit to what you can, you can do. You're working with a very narrow bandwidth. Uh, it all changed in the late 70s when we um, started with uh, our first test transmissions on FM. And that was at Wellington Front, would you believe? Um, then it moved on to stereo, then DAB, then uh, online, but each and every time uh, the quality of our signal has been improving. Okay, so um, looking at it in terms of, uh, of, of platforms, first of all, um, we would have uh, standard AM, uh, we have um, an FM uh, service, uh, our platform, and we also have um, uh, our, our digital um, equivalents in DAB, and then we also have an online presence, so we actually stream the output of uh, uh, Radio Gibraltar Main and the Plus service, uh, and that goes out um, onto the website, and also then we, 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 have, we have apps as well. In terms of the traditional sites, um, we've got um, our uh, Radio Gibraltar and our Plus service uh, 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 simulcasted from uh, O'Hara's and North, North Mole for the, for the main service, uh, Radio Gibraltar. Um, the, the DAB uh, at the top of the rock there um, is capable of doing both the main uh, and uh, the Plus and there's a little bit of spare capacity in there for the future. Uh, in relation to the links out to the sites, um, the, these um, are designed um, because the, the thing about um, delivering to platforms is that going forward into the future, everybody imagines that the service has to be up 99.999% of the time. And the, the way to do that is to build resilient links and to build redundancy into the system. So the links that we have out to the transmitter sites, there would be an A and a B, and if one link went down, there's an auto switch over onto the other side. And, and that's largely how you scale up uh, from a tower like this out to the sites, it's not just a simple matter of uh, pointing and shooting. Um, ideally what we would like to do in the future is we would like to eliminate the links uh, and we would like to do what's called line feeds uh, and that could be either traditional copper or IP um, or, or more often than not these days it would be a, a, a dedicated fibre circuit. I'm very excited. The atmosphere here in Broadcasting House is lovely. What a day to be alive. Yeah. It's very pleasant the first thing in the morning to hear your voices. Oh, thank you. Happy birthday. Because uh, I like the music and I get BBC updates about what's going on in the world, so... Because that work, because it's on. I hear, I hear the news and apart from that, music. So I, I'm satisfied with the uh, offer. On the radio. I suppose the local news, I guess. It's really nice. And what kind of time of day do you listen and what do you enjoy about it? Yeah, news and everything. Is that right? I, I like it. I, I do enjoy it. We put it on from about half seven in the morning. Don't listen to Ben and Ken. I come here every two weeks from the UK and I'm ex-forces, so I like to hear some information that's going on with the, the forces as well through your station. And uh, how do you listen and kind of what time of day? On the internet, all day, 
it's playing on my phone and in the flat. So uh, usually in work. Nine o'clock in the morning when I get in and we listen to it till I go home at five. And yes. I like the competitions and I like the um, the um, magic hour where she goes back in time. Not really. You don't listen. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, we do it every, every day. How, how, when do you listen to it? Why do you listen to it? Uh, the, on the morning and during the school run in the car. In the morning, it's uh, yeah, it's good. it's fun. It's a fun uh, and uh, community program. So something to, to to listen to every morning, definitely. I always listen to it. Always, it's always on in the car, for instance. Um, I think it's the best radio channel we've got in Gibraltar, and even the ones that you've got in Spain, it's the best one. I really enjoy listening to it. Well, we're at the very heart of the community. GBC, Radio Gibraltar, is for Gibraltar. Local people making programmes for local people. And that is our, our relevance at the end of the day. We've also come a long way, technologically speaking, because from the old days of uh, medium wave AM transmission through to FM, through to soundtrack on TV, through to DAB radio, uh, the future is online, basically. Mm. And uh, the beauty of radio is that it is portable and you can take it anywhere you want, and these days, anywhere in the world. Well, I think it was very important to mark the anniversary. It's um, a thing that's fallen out of favour with some radio stations um, around the world, particularly the ones that have a younger audience. They don't think it's um, relevant. It, it, it makes them sound old. Um, with us, I think it was slightly different because we have a, a, a history I think we can be proud of in terms of where the radio station began uh, as a, a way of getting information out to the people. That, that there was no other way of doing that at the time. And this whole thing about when the, the border was closed and the role Radio Gibraltar played during those times uh, in terms of being a link between friends and family that were separated uh, is fascinating and, and I think it's um, it, it's good to use the anniversary to highlight uh, the heritage of the station so it's not forgotten, uh, particularly among uh, the youngsters. But um, having said that, um, we, we've tried as quickly as we can to move on uh, and not be stuck in the past. We've been uh, sitting on a, a, a brand new jingle package, which was recorded quite recently, and we thought the best time to launch that was pretty much straight after the uh, anniversary, so they've been on air since Monday. At the end of the day, it's a cosmetic change, but it does give, I hope, the impression of momentum and that we're not standing still. We're all, after the anniversary, now looking forward to the next big challenge. It's a wonderful anniversary and particularly proud for me to be the CEO of GBC on such an occasion uh, and making me feel very old because I've worked for it for over half its life since 1984, so for 34 years. So 60 years on, it's still very much a, a loved institution in Gibraltar. It's been really special actually and uh, I'd go as far to say a little bit emotional because you really kind of get a feel for what the, the listeners feel for Radio Gibraltar. So lots of people getting in touch and just expressing gratitude and happiness that we've been around for, for such a long time. So it's, it's been really nice and really lovely to catch up with with old friends and, and work colleagues and have them on air and, and, and have fun with them as well. It's been great. It's lovely. When it, it comes to an anniversary it, uh, and little items come up, whether in the newspapers or on TV or on the radio, listening to the old jingles, of course it brings back to fantastic memories, you know, about the, the years you spent here. My wife uh, often says, perhaps she even says it now, that I was married to GPC. I was blown away by the warm reaction that we had on the anniversary. Um, people went out of their way to send messages through that they didn't have to send. Uh, it took time to open up the app or pick up the phone and not just to say oh hey happy anniversary but people really wanted to share memories and get involved and I think um, I think Radio Gibraltar has a very strong standing in the community regardless of when people tune in to listen and, and I think that was really reflected on the day um, we had a, I felt we had a very warm reception and the same on the outside broadcast Normally at these things, people sort of have a little look or, uh, or just sort of wave as they go past. Mm -hmm. But I felt that the outside broadcast we had for the anniversary was an example of uh, the warmth. That's probably the word I'd choose, of people really engaging. And, uh, and that was a really lovely thing to experience. Palabras al viento. Una sección del domingo de Manuel José Mascareñas.
Well, I go back almost 60 years, not quite, not quite, but almost 60 years, um, to long before I joined the, the Radio Gibraltar staff. Uh, when I was a, a girl, um, my dad, of course, was head of, of television and radio at, at the time. And I remember being there always. I remember all the old names, you know, like uh, uh, Luci Montegrifo and Josephine Parodi, um, Sir Howard Davis, of course, all the, the, the early lot. Uh, and I've been looking at past surveys that we've done, and they go back quite a few years, uh, and it makes me very happy to see that consistently every single survey, audience survey, that we've done over those years, Radio Gibraltar has come up tops. It is the favourite local radio station. And some people will say, well, it can't be anything but, because there's, there's no rival in Gibraltar, really. Uh, to which I'd say, yes, but the world is a big place. Uh, we've got Spain next door. They've got a myriad of radio stations. And th in the same way as many people watch Spanish television, they may also listen to, Sp listen to Spanish radio. And nowadays, with the internet, the world's your oyster. And you can listen to any radio station from anywhere in the world. But yet people continue to listen to Radio Gibraltar, which is very gratifying. I think it's important to understand what a public service broadcaster is as opposed to a commercial radio station which is purely there to make money. We're not, so that's not what we're all about. What we should be doing is offering uh, an element of choice, um, variety uh, in our programmes, maybe um, one or two programmes for a minority audience, which arguably we could do more of, um, but what we're very wa wary of is spoiling or interfering with the main service which I think we've struck on a, a format that's working very well uh, and I think the, the the place and we would like to do more of these specialist uh, shows would be the uh, alternative channel what we call Radio Gibraltar Plus. And, and that's available where? Uh, that's available on FM and on uh, Medium Wave and also on the app online uh, at the moment, we only use it for the Spanish service in the afternoon for a couple of hours from two. Pues qué bonita esa plegaria a la Virgen de Europa, los trovadores recordando esas dedicatorias en aquellos tiempos y recordando esta musiquita que suena en el fondo. Well, it's also the home of Parliament when when that's on, and uh, occasionally at the weekend for church services. We also uh, broadcast the lottery uh, on those channels um, every couple of weeks. I think we use it so infrequently that there's maybe not the awareness among all our listeners that it's there at all. I think the more we can use that second service and work on it to almost make it a, a second Radio Gibraltar, um, the easier it's... The, the, the easier it will make it to offer more choice mm. for people. Welcome to Made in Gibraltar, another week bringing you the very, very best in local music. How important is it for Radio Gibraltar to be a local radio station? It's vital. There are so many radio stations around the world that people can listen to these days online. So it's vital to be local. Being local is what's unique to us. Music is played by everybody, and nowadays, not so much radio, but online apps uh, and platforms like Spotify, for example, where you create your own playlist and the like. You can get that, and you don't have to have a radio station, of course. But the localness that Radio Gibraltar provides is in sync with the community. If you want to have a friend on the other side, you need to have an element of interaction with a presenter. Having a presenter sitting in London or in Nashville or wherever it is that he may be sitting is totally different to there being a presenter sitting in a Radio Gibraltar studio, in a Gibraltar studio, not necessarily Radio Gibraltar. Any studio in Gibraltar that's going to reflect that localness. The localness is reflected by, with intelligent conversation, that's of appeal to the local community. I would argue, others may argue differently, I would argue that uh, broadcasting in a bilingual way does not necessarily reflect the localness of, of the community. What reflects the localness of the community is identifying the content of what you're saying with Gibraltar, with the territory in which we serve, reflecting what is, whatever has been said internationally into the local community and what is happening around us here. That's what makes it local, and that's precisely what we're doing 
and which people are enjoying. I arrived in 2006 upon Norma Delgado's retirement and my commitment to bilingual broadcasting harks back to the heyday of Radio Gibraltar but with a strong component with the Spanish modern Latin American music combined with local music as well. So is it fair to say that there's not much uh, Yanito spoken on Radio Gibraltar? Should there be more? I don't agree with it. Uh, I think that we're either a Spanish radio station or an English language radio station. Uh, and it's for me, the important thing is the content. The content needs to be Gibraltarian. It needs to, be, it needs to um, grab the attention of those who are listening, whether you're speaking one, whether, if you're mixing your language, it doesn't tell me that that, that is local. Uh, what's local is what is being spoken about. Uh, and in my opinion, it sounds a lot more professional to keep to one language. To throw in the odd word here and there, that's what we all do. But especially in this day and age, where even our, our younger generations are speaking more in English than they used to, and they're not quite used to mixing the language, I think it reflects uh, what, our, what our listeners are actually about. So, no, I don't necessarily agree with that, with um, the mix of language um, as, a, as, as something that we do on a, on a day-to-day -day basis. We have grown so much over the past 60 years. We have so many listeners from many parts of the world. They contact us, they even um, generate uh, interest in coming over and visiting the station and finding not only about our Janito uh, language, but also about the Spanish transmission. Well, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't put to you that several contributors in recent months have told this program that part of the Gibraltarian identity is being eroded because we are speaking less Spanish and speaking less Llanito. Is Radio Gibraltar contributing to that? We broadcast in Spanish for two hours every day. Between two and four, we have the, the option for people to listen to Spanish programming. So we've not doing, we're not doing anything different to, um, to what we've always done. Uh, so we're very much uh, passionate about the languages that are spoken in Gibraltar. What I'm saying is that not necessarily do those languages need to be mixed when you're actually broadcasting because there might be people who just speak in English or who just speak in Spanish who are listening in and they'll, they, they lose half of what's being said. So in my opinion, we should stick to one language, but throwing in those comments, words, which we all do in our day-to-day -day, um, conversation. Do you think Radio Gibraltar has fewer listeners today than it had 10, 20 years ago? I think we've got more. I think we've got more because we've moved with the times on the one hand. Um, and I think from what I hear, when again, because we're a small place, you're walking down the street, you hear what's going on in shops and in, in different places, and you hear Radio Gibraltar being played. Um, so I, I think perhaps more than before. Um, I think um, I can't actually answer that because I don't have the scientific data. My um, gut feeling is that we're certainly maintaining the audience figures uh, given the feedback. Gibraltar is a small place. We may not have Raja, but we have Main Street. And when you walk down Main Street and people are telling you, I, I heard that on the radio, I love that on the radio, equally ab about television, um, people here are very uh, open in the way that they express their views and, and because we all know each other they'll have a conversation with you uh, and certainly the feedback that we continue to receive about the programs on radio is very positive. There is nothing out there other than younger people who may not be listening in the numbers that I would like them to, to be listening uh, but the information that we get would tell us that um, there are still a lot of people out there who listen to Radio Gibraltar and continues to be very popular. Our programs are jam-packed with uh, feedback from from listeners both on social media on email and on the phone. You're a young person mm -hmm. in your 20s mm -hmm. do you feel that other young people your friends are listening to Radio Gibraltar? Definitely. People my age are definitely listening to Radio Gibraltar. And I think the majority of my feedback comes from people my age, which is lovely to hear. 
um, friends, family. And I don't think it's a generation thing. I think Radio Gibraltar is for the community and it's regardless of age. So you will get the, the eight year olds or the 70 year olds in their kitchens in the morning making their breakfast or their lunches for their grandchildren and they're tuning in. But then you've also got, um, you know, the 20 year olds going to work in their cars or listening from their office and, and they're also tuning in. So I, I think age is, is irrelevant when it comes to Radio Gibraltar. We are for the community. What are Radio Gibraltar's on demand offerings? At the moment, all the on-demand programmes come via the website, the GBC website. Um, what we tend to post up there on a weekly basis are our specialist shows to listen again to, things like the Oldies Show, the Chart Show is there, and a number of others. Uh, in addition to that, we have the option to listen back to the Lunchtime Show on a daily basis, our main local news show of the day, with all the bits and pieces in between edited out, so it's uh, quite easy to find quite quickly the interview you're looking for if there's something specific you're after. Uh, we could maybe look at making those individual interviews available on their own, so it becomes even easier to find uh, what you're looking for uh, almost instantly. But uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's an area that we're looking to expand in the future. Is Radio Gibraltar doing enough to offer on-demand services? We're doing quite a lot of it, uh, but we're, it's certainly something that we'll need to increase, especially as years go by. We'll need to increase it even more uh, and have more programmes which are on demand as well. Podcasts? Something as well that can be looked at, but that brings in an extra cost because a podcast is produced, presented by somebody who's currently not on our payroll. So um, it may be that we have to redirect finances within the corporation in order to satisfy that demand. But at the moment, it's not something that's within our financial reach. But you're not ruling out redirecting existing resources to be able to offer more on-demand services? I don't rule anything out, no, because we need to move with the times. And uh, especially in two years' time when we move to our new studios, uh, that would be the time as well to reassess what we do and how we do it. With with things like music streaming services, uh, you don't you don't get that kind of personal touch. Uh, also, uh, Gibraltar being a, a small place, local radio, any any local radio station, I think, is important because it's where you go to find out what's going on. If uh, if you hear something on online or anything like that, you, you'd think, right, I'm going to go and listen to the radio and find out exactly what's going on there. The advent of of mobile phone technology uh, and smartphone technology means that uh, radio is once again at your fingertips uh, and on demand. It doesn't mean that the classic form of radio broadcast is at an end. It means that broadcasters around the world are starting to think differently about how, how they provide those services to the community. Uh, and I have no doubt that it's something that we uh, will be looking at in the future as well. How important are audience surveys in helping uh, senior management and, and yourself as CEO uh, to decide what direction to take Radio Gibraltar in? Well, we need to know where to go and we need to get that feedback from the public. They're the people who we serve. We don't have radar figures as they have in the UK where you get pretty much up-to-date, um, accurate averages of uh, people listening in. That, that technology does not exist here. So what we do every year or so, every 15 months, we do a face-to-face -face, uh, survey uh, and we ask people, what do you listen to? What kind of music do you like? Do you think that we're hitting the right, mar the right uh, targets? Uh, we do the same for television. Uh, and with that, we, we create a database of uh, feedback. Listening patterns have changed in, say, in the same way as readership patterns have changed, you know. Today, people are more inclined to hear and read just the headlines. Um, and, and I think in the, in the newspaper, in the same as, as on radio, you've got to change the way in which you, you do things uh, to reach out to your wider audience. But I, I think ra radio will always remain relevant. There's always going to be a place for, for radio. In the same way as uh, may, maybe five years ago I would have thought differently. I think there is also a, a place for newspapers uh, because people still do want to read the physical uh, newspaper. And I think people still want to listen to that person at the other end who is talking to them directly mm -hmm. and only them. And that's the magic of radio. I consider it a very powerful tool. We are a bilingual radio, so 
we are growing constantly and with um, social media I mean you can see the result of how much things have changed within the years and it's an improvement so we are definitely going to improve I have no doubt I think the the surveys have proved that we have a, a very large uh, listenership but we can't rest on our laurels I mean you know you, you've got to keep up with with the times and we have to be relevant with the, the times and the audience that that we serve and uh, I think we're doing that quite nicely is radio still relevant I truly truly believe that it really is um, very hard pressed to find somebody who doesn't at some point listen to Radio Gibraltar. Many people actually tuning in first thing in the morning, although they have a huge choice and they've got breakfast television as well. I'd like to think that it's going to be here in 60 years time, a different kind of radio, because at the end of the day, you know, things evolve. Um, but I think Radio Gibraltar will continue to be the voice of, of Gibraltar which is primarily that is really what it is. It's always been the voice of Gibraltar right from the start, from 1958. Because, again, we are unique in the sense that uh, we are Gibraltarians broadcasting to Gibraltarians, and, and, and that is the, the, the uniqueness of uh, Radio Gibraltar. Absolutely. There's always going to be something to be said for uh, having a radio set uh, on in the background whilst you're carrying out your daily work. Uh, or having uh, your car radio tuned in to uh, listen to the latest local news as you're driving around, it's always going to have a place in people's minds and hearts. Certainly from my perspective, I'll be fighting tooth and nail to make sure that it survives, uh, but I guess it's down to the younger generations uh, to see what they do with it. We need to make sure that we educate them to love it, um, and hopefully we'll do that job well. We, by, by we I mean people of my generation. Uh, and let's hope that that happens, but at the end of the day it's in their hands, isn't it? I think we'd all like to think that there is a future for radio, and I'm sure there is, but um, I think it's more likely to be stations like ours who offer something a little bit different. I think the radio stations that are going to struggle in the future with um, all the uh, different ways there are to consume music are the music stations. Uh, if um, you're just offering music with very brief links in between, then the difference between that and say Spotify it, it, they're very very similar um, I, I think it's much more likely a station like ours will, uh, will will survive because we're giving people something that they can't get anywhere else they're you know Spotify aren't telling you what's going on in Gibraltar we're doing that radio is not going anywhere I hope not anyway because I mean I love it and and I hope it's here forever I think I mean you see you see kind of I'm going off on one now you see um like films about apocalyptic futures and, and dystopia and all that and they always they always check the radio they always say like oh no the, the zombies are coming I better you know and they're trying to find it I, so I think even in the future when the world is <laughs> nothing like it is nowadays I think the people will still turn to radio because technologic technologically as well it's it's one of those things you you don't need all this digital business it's it's uh, it's like we were talking about like, as we were saying earlier on it's it's an old it's an old uh, old form of of transmitting so I think I don't exactly know how it works but radio waves they're not going anywhere <laughs> <laughs> so I think um, I think it'll be around for a, a very 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 long time when we're all mutants. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll agree Radio Gibraltar's staff, support staff and listeners have made a strong case for radio not being old media. Radio's staying power, they say, reflects its immediacy, a unique connection with the listener. We heard the Chief Minister pay tribute to Radio Gibraltar on its 60th birthday, describing it as the soundtrack of our lives and an institution which has helped to cement the Gibraltarian identity. I hope you've enjoyed our look at The Rock's favourite radio station. That's where we leave Viewpoint tonight. We'll be back at the same time next week from the whole team. Thanks for watching and good night.